Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we are trying out a new polishing technique that involves no power tools, no pneumatic tools, nothing fancy, just polish and sandpaper. Heck, it barely even involves a cloth. I'm just going to use a shop towel for it. Um, so here's the deal. I have not tried this. I'm hoping that it's going to be cool and it's going to help you guys uh, that don't have the power tools, don't have pneumatic polishers and that sort of thing to do your polish jobs. One of my viewers sent me this, looked really good the way that he did it, uh, but I don't know if it's going to work and it only kind of makes sense to me. So we're going to give it a try. I'll explain in a second. If you are, however, looking for a polishing setup, just a basic one that isn't going to cost you a bunch of money that can still kind of get the job done, you can get attachments with foam polishing pads that chuck right into your drill. If you don't have a drill, how are you building things without a drill? If you don't have a drill, get a drill. Okay, uh, moving right along. The concept here is that you sand with your sandpaper, and as you're going up to your high grits of sandpaper, you actually use polish as well, almost like wet sanding. So what I'm going to do, mm -hmm. I have a guitar that most of you will recognize already polished. This is my uh, Duplicolor one that I did recently using the Calypso Blue and I used the 2K Clear over it. So I'm going to scuff that up again so that it can be polished again because I'm not doing anything else with it. I'm going to scuff it with some 1200 grit and then we're going to come in with 1500, 2000, 2500 and 3000 and we are going to use the Jeskar compound. So I've got correcting compound and micro finishing polish. The correcting compound I'm going to use on the 1500 and 2000 and then I'm going to bump over to the micro finishing polish and do 2,500 and 3,000. And we're gonna see how it works. Should be interesting. We're gonna make sure that we are wiping all our polish off in between. I'm hoping this system's actually gonna be relatively quick. I kinda get it, like the, the compounds may create some lubrication and make it finer. You're gonna to have to sand perfectly smooth before you start this. I'm really interested to see if this is gonna work. I'm gonna use uh, just a cork block as my block because it's about the right size for the little paper that I have. and. It came with my uh, polishing kit, my buff and polish kit from Mohawk. And uh, yeah, that's about it. If you're looking for these Jeskar products, I'm fond of them. I've used them a couple times. I did one tutorial with them. Uh, they're pretty good. They're available through Solo Music Gear, sologuitars.com. If you want to help me out, you can use the Solo Music Gear link in the description. Let's get started. Two quick things before we dive in here. One, since Teespring keeps sending me things saying, remember to talk about it. Uh, I've got t-shirts now, check them out below the video. And two, time for Brad's uh, health tip, oatmeal stout. Have you ever heard that oatmeal is very good for you? Lifting things that are heavy is also apparently pretty good for you. So combine the two and get yourself a heavy, I'm thinking of starting a, an episodic show called Pints and Power Tools or Pints and Painting or something just so I have excuses to drink beer on camera. But uh, yeah, Brad's health tip, a heavy beer with oatmeal something in it. There's probably no actual oatmeal. Oh, and uh, on the same note, a huge thank you to the guys over at Texas Toast Guitars. Them drinking Coors Light in their videos for some reason uh, has basically segued into me drinking beer in my videos and it's a nice upgrade. All right, we're gonna start with the obvious first step here, which is to take our nicely polished finish and scuff it up again so we can repolish it um, because otherwise, None of this makes any sense. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of focus on an area here. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna test this out around here. Okay, let's see that dust off of there. And now you can clearly see that whereas I've got my nice polished gloss on the rest of this guitar, or hopefully you can see that, yeah, this area is very scuffed up. Time to fix that, I guess. You know, I was at one point planning on turning this guitar into a finished product, uh, <laughs> so it's a little goofy that I am now um, sanding it again, but oh well. It's worth it. This is going to be interesting. I'm, uh, I'm excited to see how it turns out. So let's get a little bit of our correcting compound on there. We shouldn't need too much. Well, we do want to kind of coat our sandpaper, don't we? Let's do it that way, actually. I should have asked 
the guy which which option <laughs> worked best, putting it on the, the sandpaper or right on the guitar. This might actually turn out to be pretty easy. That's my hope, because I am kind of lazy, and even though, though I have power tools uh, and will continue to use them, this would be good if I can show you guys how to get this done without them. So let's try it. So this is 1500 grit and correcting compound. And I often like to sand linearly, but because I'm polishing, I'm going in circular motions as I would with a polisher. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and I don't know how long to do this. <laughs> this is new to me. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm pressing relatively hard. Uh, I suspect since I basically haven't moved since COVID started and it's, December of 2020 now that uh, I will be out of breath fairly soon, but let's Just keep her going for the moment. I might might even have overdone it I did overdo it. I think a little on the amount of polish that I used there, but that's fine I'm learning as I go here So how does it look? Not bad pretty satiny pretty satiny at this point that Correcting compound in 1500 grit gives me something that looks a lot like what I would suspect a 3000 grit would look like, which makes sense because the correcting compound is just a much finer abrasive, which is being used to lubricate a less fine abrasive. So let's move on to our 2000 grit. I think I'm going to put it right on the paper again. So I want to make sure I kind of have this coated because otherwise I'm scuffing a 2000 grit when I want to be scuffing it, whatever this combination is, I guess. When you're sanding, as you move your way up through the grits, you don't have to sand as much because you're just taking out the little scratches from before. I'm, I'm guessing this is the same, kind of the same thing when you're polishing, so I think I shouldn't have to go too hard with this. I am covering a little more area though, just <laughs> just in case so I don't end up with a... I mean normally you do the whole thing obviously, but I'm covering a little more area so I don't end up missing a spot that I hit with the grip before. Okay, so yeah, that looks even even a little smoother as one might think. Starting to work our way up from the satin range into almost a semi-gloss-ish type of thing. So now, after uh, a little bit of refreshment, we'll move on to our micro finishing polish. And some 2500 grit. So we're getting there. Didn't need too, too much of this. I used less of the compound on the second one there, and I found it just a little bit more challenging to move around, which is fine. Not really an issue, but you know, if you're going to lubricate your paper with this stuff, you might as well kind of lubricate it. So, touch more this time. Finer paper, easier to move. Yeah, it's really slipping along there nice now. Again, not entirely sure how long to do this. But I think that should be adequate. All right, and now on to the last stage that I have available to me here at the the home garage, which is a 3000 grit. And if I can get this to work, a little bit of the micro finishing polish again. I mean, logically, I should be wearing gloves too, so let's keep that in mind. Alrighty. Okay, 
Okay. So this is slipping along nicely again. I think that should be about it. I really just don't know what I'm going to end up with, so <laughs> I hesitate to stop sanding. All right. That's going to be about about it. I'm going to take a clean section of my shop towel and almost almost buff a little bit to finish off here. Hopefully not scratch it with the shop towel. That would be borderline ironic and uh, and moronic. All right, let's do a reveal. Okay, final verdict. It's smooth, really, really smooth, but it is not glossy per se. It's still kind of in that satin range. It's fairly uniform. But it looks like it just needs that final polish still. It's, it looks like it's been really nicely sanded up to like 4,000, 5,000 grit, but still needs that final polish to get it, you know, that shine that, uh, God, I scratched that up a bit too, but anyway, that shine that you expect uh, as opposed to what we're dealing with here. Um, so yeah, that's that, I guess. That's that method. It, uh, it's probably a good way to get yourself to the final polishing stage if you don't have the really high grit papers. But if you've got a good polish, like a high quality compound, a good polish, and a, a decent polishing mechanism, uh, then you should be able to buff out scratches that are worse than this anyway. You should be able to take out like a 2500, maybe even up to a 1200 grit scratch, depending on what system you're using, if you've got like a big bench buffer. If you are buffing by hand with a cloth or a foam pad, yeah, this is probably a good step to help you get closer. Uh, it may also be an effective way to limit the amount of polishing that you have to do if you're using something like this on a drill. Well, I, I don't love it when the tests don't really work, but that was still interesting. In our next video, we're going to talk about our front end rounding tools. We're going to do our tool comparison for that. So stick around. It's going to be good. It won't be on the ES35 kit because I've already done that on that guitar using a particular method, so don't worry about that, um, but we'll test it out on a different neck. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it, uh, it doesn't necessarily yield the results that a lot of you are looking for, so use this technique or don't to get, but now you know what stage it'll get you to and, and you can make that decision. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already so you can see the rest of my projects and painting tutorials, etc. And yeah, thanks again. Have a good one. I'll see you next time. Cheers, everyone.